scouted our backyard, yeah. how can you not go, wow, exactly. look at this place? I do it every single time. It's amazing, too, because, I mean, for me now, 38 years in, I'll go to the top of the bowl or I'll go even up Richmond Ridge and take some people snowshoeing. I am still in awe. Yeah. I mean, I still look around, and I'm like, and I'm kind of, like, surprised, like, I'm still in awe. Like, I mean, yeah. after all these years, but it's that beautiful. It's yeah. that awesome. It's that spectacular. Or what my dad would have said, God's country. Son, you're so fortunate sure. and you're blessed to live in God's country. I said, yeah, well, we grew up in not a bad place in Wisconsin, Dad. We're actually the old style commercial was filmed. Yep. That said, God's country. <laughs> <laughs> old style beer. Yeah, old style beer. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. But, um, we've, uh, again, name of the show is Faces of Dab, and we got a, a great video clip. Cool. It's going to talk more about your adventuring, exploring, mountaineering and being a powder hound. So let's check that out next. So we talked about some of these aspects, Dav, like um, the adventurer, the explorer, yeah. the mountaineer, the powder hound. Um, I guess let's break them down, you know, each one of them. Just kind of summarize what you love most about being an adventurer. Yeah, there's so many things. It's, it's um, so many things that get me stoked about what I do. That's why this series was called The Faces of Dav. It was like all these different hats that I wear in the industry, <laughs> you know, whether it's being, being a guide and taking people out there or uh, setting goals for myself with projects like climbing the 14ers or you know, tr uh, traveling to unskied destinations in the world, things like that. Um, you know, the engineer is another segment that, that was all about me designing and developing boots with Scarpa and skis with Kessley and clothing with Spider and you know, kind of getting your hands dirty when it comes to trying to make the best gear for our sport. Um, and then there's there's like well it's not in the series but the nonprofit side of things I mean I'm my sort of three pillars of charitable work are avalanche education and safety um, uh, raising money for for kids to be involved with skiing like with AVSC and um, finally very importantly climate change through my work with Protect Our Winters right. so those things are are as much a part of who I am in my career as the skiing itself. I really um, love that giving back. And ultimately, like, it, at the end of the day or the end of my career, who cares about winning world championships or X Games medals or films? That stuff doesn't matter. I don't keep those trophies on the, wall, on the, you know, on the cupboard or whatever. Um, <laughs> what matters is, like, if you made a difference, if you helped yeah. make the sport better or the world a better place or your right. community a better place. So that's the most important thing to me. And it's fun when you're young to, like, win and yeah. be competing and be, like, on top of the world but it, yeah. as you get older you realize that those things are not as important so but how that affects someone else how that inspires someone else this you is know, true. in the moment of yeah. course who doesn't want to be like you know yeah, yeah. I mean, for me winning a race like back in the day especially a bike race is nothing better because the other thing is you know how much work went into that yeah and then you finally get this reward and it's almost like an explosion of joy of and, and you're purposeful like mm -hmm. you're fulfilling your purpose so there's also you know a lot more greater meaning around that but I think those accomplishments in terms of inspiring others. Let's go to just to the basic of being a powder hound. Cause okay. like, what is it about powder that yeah. we go like so <laughs> mental for? Like we're like, oh. we would risk our lives literally to go for this stuff. You know, we used to think there was another kind of white powder that was the most addictive in the world. Yeah. Aspen was kind of known for that in the 80s, by the way. Yeah, I'm aware. Um, <laughs> but what is it? It's so addictive. Like, what do we love so much about yeah. powder? In, in, in fact, in your own words, You know, I, you it's um, some of the most beautiful and incredible things in life are the most difficult to describe. Yeah, yeah. And, and powder skiing is, is one of them. Um, <laughs> I was skiing up in Canada one year. This is like a decade ago with a Swiss guide at CMH, a, a classic old guy, Rudy. And uh, he said, Chris, 
skiing powder is like peeing in your pants. <laughs> Everyone can see that you're doing it, but only you know what it feels like. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love, and, uh, it's kind of a warm feeling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, when you're when when that soft, dry, cold snow is hitting you in the waist and in the chest, uh, and you're choking on it, and, and gravity is pulling you down or pushing you down the mountain, um, and you're in control. Maybe you're in the forest, or maybe you're uh, up in the alpine. It's it's just like an incredible high yeah. that uh, again I, I don't think there are i mean poets and authors and skiers for decades have been trying to put words to it and i'm not sure anyone has ever really done it justice um it's a very similar feeling to to catching a wave on a surfboard yes. where mother nature is yes. the driving force and we're just giving little inputs here and there to kind of play with that force um as I was saying earlier in the show, I would typically be in Japan right now, which is the um, the mecca of powder skiing. It Japan. just yeah, yeah, it does not stop snowing. It's wow. cold, it's dry, um, and the beach forests are there's some something really like energized about them and, and beautiful. And uh, um, I miss that feeling a lot. You know, it's um, well, yeah. Once you get it, it's addictive. There's a feeling that feeling of flotation. You know, and for me, I have a theory. Let's hear it. Back in the womb. Yeah, when sure. We were floating around like woohoo. All we had to sure. do was float around, get nutrition, take a nap, do it again. Yeah. We're all just getting back to that floating feeling of bliss. Yeah. That's just a theory. We'd have to go really, really deep. Um, but we have so much other things to get to because I did tease Mount Everest. And yeah. You not only skied Everest, you shared that with a client. I did, yeah. And we had talked about that on, in a past episode. Yeah. But can you just kind of capsulize that Mount Everest experience? Um, I can, yeah. It's uh, certainly right up there on the on the podium of, of my great mountain experiences, if I could put it that way. No doubt. Um, for all of the sort of negative uh, media or press that Mount Everest might get for accidents and crowds or trash, a lot of that is kind of unfounded. Um, we had an incredible experience there. Our experience was one of good teamwork, good planning, uh, solid weather. Um, Neil Beidelman and I having an opportunity to ski the Lotsey face, which is just like only been done, I don't know, six or seven times. Which what a great partner that is. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> talk about like, and it, at the bottom of that thing, when we were done, we, we hugged <laughs> each other and just like looked each other in the eyes, like, what did we just do? Oh my gosh. I mean, it must <laughs> you know, just... you'll take that one to your grave for the rest of your life. Like that's a powerful, powerful oh. experience. And then on summit day with our client Effie, uh, on a gorgeous, gorgeous day, bluebird, full moon, Amazing. climbing throughout the night, wow. and then the, the sun beginning to come up over the, the Tibetan plateau, the eastern sky at 4.30 in the morning, lightning, and then you know by 6.30, we're over the Hillary Step and on our way to the summit. Oh. It, it was a, a surreal, as surreal an experience as I've had in the mountains, and it was perfect. And our timing was right. Um, we spent 45 minutes on top, enjoying it, taking pictures, just like, wow. you know, just tripping on the whole experience of altitude and taking off the oxygen mask and then realizing you're getting really cold because you don't have oxygen for the metabolic process. That was a crazy experience. <laughs> but it's so nice out. It probably allured you yeah, to be yeah. like, oh, we're just up at the top of the mountain. Like it's oh, yeah, it was. I mean, I had, my, the I had my gloves off. I was taking video and unreal. just kind of, it was unreal. That and must be part of the surreal aspect is it's so nice. There was here. no wind at all, like none. Wow. So that made it really comfortable because it was probably like 10 below zero out. But because there was no wind, it was quite comfortable. Awesome. And um, and it was funny, before we left Aspen, my wife, Jessie, said, Chris, whatever you do, do not call me from the summit. Because, you know, that's halfway there. The summit's not the goal. Oh, Getting get back down. down is the goal. Right. So I wanted to get on the sat phone and be like, I'm on the freaking summit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but we didn't. We didn't. I, I called her when we got back to base camp the next day and was like, yeah, wow. we're down. We did it. It was amazing. And she was, wow. you know, it, so it was, it was a really cool experience. And. And I, I love all mountains. I mean, standing on top of the Maroon Bells is equally uh, as an, an awesome experience. So um, there's something cool about summits, too. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're touching on all these things, powder skiing, climbing mountains. Oh, that's what uh, we're here for today. Yeah, you know, I, I, I get the same feeling when I first run, go up the gondola and do a top to bottom down Spar Gulch in the morning, and you get a perfect groomer. 
you get to the bottom, you're just like, wow, like what a, what a start to the day. Which is really interesting, too, in that you don't need to be up on Mount Everest no. to have that feeling. You Absolutely know, there's not. There's something about a, a base feeling of skiing, mm -hmm. you know, the freedom, the being outside, the speed. Talk, Klaus yes. likes to talk about zero Gs, you know, and getting in the air and feeling that feeling of yes. zero Gs and speed. And, I mean, again, Klaus was skiing, I could call it his age speed. Yeah, right. Skiing, like, 80s into his 80s, you know, 80 something miles an hour. That's but incredible. All those sensations, right? It's kind of the cumulative yeah. sum total of that, right? Yep, yep. I absolutely love that concept. Um, the sensations of, of what we do, whether it's on a bicycle or on a cliff face or in powder. Um, yeah, again, I just, I'm at a loss of words. It's just awesome. Two quick tips before we finish the show, Dev. How can pe a couple of big tips in, or main tips in terms of people going after their dreams in life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and pursuing their passion? Well, you know, I'm a big believer that um, there's sort of four key attributes to successful people in life. Um, and, I'll, and I'll share them. And there, this isn't something that I made up. But um, if you have these four things, you can do anything, anything. The first is passion, right? You and I are sitting here talking about all the stuff that we love, powder skiing and whatnot. It doesn't have to be a sport. It could be a, an academic subject or a hobby. But you got to have passion in your life, yeah. right? If you if you're not passionate about something, you're like on the hamster wheel, and you know you got to maybe stop and pivot and reset. Um, the second thing is vision, and that's that's what you do with your passion. Like where where do you take it? Like I love skiing so much as a kid and an adult, and then I had this vision of like I could be a pro skier, so I'm going to work towards that. Um, so that's the, th that's the game plan. That's the game plan is like, yeah, having a plan with your passion. And then the third thing is perseverance, which is like, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get hurt. Things aren't going to go your way. There's going to be a global pandemic or a crazy man in the white house or whatever. It's going <laughs> to just get messed up or all the above or all the above. <laughs> you got to persevere and, and have grit and, and be tough. And then the final one is teamwork. Man, surround yourself with great people yes. because none of us succeed on our own, yes. whether it's the coaches that I had or the trainers or my equipment uh, manufacturers or family, all the friends that I've skied around here with, like your partners, that those, those uh, t people that make up your team yeah. will take you to incredible places. So those like four things are how you're going to hit the proverbial home runs of life. Buddy, I baked cookies. Did you have fun on the show today? I had a great time. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe is that, that went it? that fast. Is that it? Jeez. That's it, buddy. Wow. Homemade cookies? No way. Organic chocolate chunk and coconut. COVID cookies? Baked just hours ago. Awesome. Well, they're totally sick, but not that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you have fun on the show today, Dad? I did. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, it's awesome. Air elbows, Boom. buddy. Air fists. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris Davenport. Yeah. Thanks for all you do for our community. And thank you guys for watching The Local Show.